Hi, my name is Dale Brown, and I have the great joy and privilege of being the senior pastor here at Community Church at Ocean Pines. Uh, we do a bi-monthly podcast about things that are happening in the life of this church, uh, about spiritual disciplines and faith and practices, and about how needs and opportunities for giving and volunteering occur within the general area. And today, I am very privileged to be joined by, and Debbie, I'm going to be very careful. I'm not mm -hmm. going to say an old friend. I'm going to say a friend of long standing. Oh, I like that. I that's like better that. because I, we were about the same age at this point. <laughs> yeah. So so this is Debbie Donaway, mm -hmm. and Debbie is the director of Salisbury Urban Ministries, mm -hmm. which is a very important part of the United Methodist Outreach mm -hmm. and community here in Salisbury, Berlin, and Somerset, Wicomico, and Worcester mm -hmm. counties. Debbie, welcome to Community Thank Church. Thank you. I first met Debbie when she was the Salisbury District Secretary, and now it's the Lower Shore District, mm -hmm. and she was the district of my superintendent, the Reverend Dr. Tom McKelvey, mm -hmm. who was an extremely important pastor mm -hmm. here at this church. In fact, we sit in the office complex mm -hmm. named after Tom, and, and we honor Karen as well as mm -hmm. his partner, and, and, and also uh, the program of Salisbury Urban Ministries grew out of the vision, a plan that Tom had. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of connections, and, and welcome thank again, you, thank and thank you. you for being here. So Debbie, we're going to spend about 15 minutes talking about Salisbury Urban Ministries and about its impact, but I think it's always fascinating to know how people get to where they are. Mm -hmm. So what is it about your job mm -hmm. and this mission opportunity that got you excited and caused you to apply and to take okay. this position? Well, I th think we, you kind of hit on it in the fact that I was working for Reverend Tom McKelvey when this uh, organization was founded, sort of followed along with it. It goes, I guess, the Methodist Church and being a part of that goes way mm -hmm. back to, you know, I was raised in Asbury Church in Salisbury. Mm -hmm. My father was a lay pastor. Okay. Um, and then I was a lay speaker at one point, always been a member of the churches, and I had gone a different direction. And um, I was approached by a parish council member of Salisbury Urban Ministry and said that, you know, we've always had a appointed pastor as executive mm -hmm. director for Salisbury Urban Ministry. And they were going to go in a different direction and maybe find somebody that had um, some different talents. Right, right. And I was asked to apply. I thought that was a little bit unusual because yes, I was a lay person. No, I wasn't a pastor and had the history with it, but sure, why not? And was asked to um, take the position. And that was okay. in 2013. Wow. <laughs> so you've been there for, a long, for longer yes. than I even had thought. Wow. Yeah, yep, Good for since you. October 2013, Reverend Ronald Bell mm -hmm. was the executive director and um, he, he was became ill at that time. I remember. And um, they were without a director, a director mm -hmm. evidently for a few months. So um, I jumped in and uh, floundered around a little bit. <laughs> and thank goodness that um, Reverend Fred Duncan was the district superintendent mm -hmm. that, of that time. And um, all I had to do was just pick up the phone and say, okay, what is an annual report? Mm -hmm. What is our stand on this policy? And um, he kind of held my hand through it. I had um, mm -hmm. seasoned staff that were already there. Good. That's had always helpful. That's very helpful. They are, and they are still with me. Thank Good. The, thank the Lord. Well, that says a lot if they're with you still and saw you through that and they're still there. Oh, my there. goodness. They're still there holding our hands. That's for sure. Um, and I guess it just seemed that God had, had, a, had a plan for me that I had no clue about. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so when I go back and look at the different positions I've had, um, working on a chicken farm, <laughs> an activities director, working for a nonprofit, um, working for Johns Hopkins Research Project. When you look at all those different programs and different opportunities and then you, I end up here I'm thinking, well there was a plan that I had no clue about because all those um, experiences prepared me for where I am today. <laughs> God's pretty smart about stuff like that. I think so. You know, um, you know, we serve a good God mm -hmm. who uses things that happen in our lives 
and, and Debbie, I've always experienced that none of those things are wasted. No. They no. all, we don't know how they're going to be used. Yes. But there's a next step mm -hmm. in God's leading that brings us to the place we really need to be. Oh, I truly believe it. So what's the favorite thing about going to work in the morning that you have? I know that what I'm doing enables us to reach out to God's people. Okay. I know that... Um, the contacts that I make, mm -hmm. the grants that are written, the volunteers that step up, uh, the staff that's doing the extra mile, and particularly through COVID, and we mm -hmm. we only closed for four weeks, two and one at one point, and okay. two, and the governor demanded it. The fact that I know going to work and enabling our staff, our volunteers, our clients uh, to move forward. It's a lot of responsibility, it but, it make, but I, I have a good feeling about it. You that. make a tangible difference in the lives of people on a daily basis. Oh, I want to there write people, that down. You, there are people who eat because <laughs> yeah. you mm -hmm. are there. You know, I, felt, I feel the same way about we have a food pantry mm -hmm. here. Yes. And I well, often you look and walk around, and, and Austin, who's taping this, will tell you that sometimes I look like I'm wandering around mm -hmm, lost, but mm -hmm. I'm talking to people oh, and things. Yeah, yeah. So I happened in the food pantry, and there was this lady who looked at me, and she pointed at me, and she said, mm -hmm. I know you. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. I'm thinking, okay, what bad thing did I do? Right. And she says, we went to high school together. And then I realized who it was, and she uh -huh. said, you were smart. And I'm like, okay, what happened since then? <laughs> but the other part of this is, this is a classmate of mine. Mm -hmm. And if I had known on a personal level, I would have given her food. Right. I'm thankful for those organizations that do provide food yeah. because it's very expensive at oh this point Oh, my goodness, time yes. In places where there are gaps yes. today. Mm -hmm. And you do more than food. I mean, there's oh, lots absolutely. of things that yes. you guys do, yes. as well as Community Church does. Mm -hmm. So tell us what, give us a, a, if you were, a, a, an overview okay. of what, what Salisbury Urban Ministry does. Um, well, we offer five programs. Okay. We have a food pantry on Tuesdays and Thursdays. That has changed to just Wicomico residents uh, during COVID. Mm -hmm. It was open to anybody in mm -hmm. need. Things have really changed since then. Um, the availability of free food through the Maryland Food Bank. Um, they were getting government support from there. It's no longer there. We have the same type of issue. Same, same opportunity. Um, they're very generous in what they can give, but that has hit our budget. Um, in April, we'd spent 61% of our food pantry budget wow. already. But we do have a food pantry as Wicomico residents. Um, we, th through changing through COVID, we also noticed that there was a need in Pittsville and Willards. Mm -hmm. So Ayers Church now has a food pantry once a month. Okay, and that's Reverend Shane Moran. Yes. It's, and mm -hmm. good group of people there, very fine Yes, people. they are. And then Eden Church in Willards, he's okay. also the pastor mm -hmm. there. And so they also have a food pantry okay. once a month. All right, neat. Um, we provide the administrative support, okay. the funding. They do um, send us a donation once a month, which is helpful. Okay. But we do the administrative support, organizing, ordering the food, and Reverend Shane and um, Kevin Krutner. Okay. Uh, one of our volunteers mm -hmm. and part-time staff helps out with getting the food down. Then we have prescription assistance. Okay, okay. That's also on Tuesdays and Thursdays. Is that based on income? It is based on income. Right. What we're finding, we have, it's a... We have that same program just next door. Oh, do prescription assistance? Yeah. Well, yeah. we'll have to talk. Yeah, we can talk. <laughs> we can talk. Um, so that's also grant funded and some of the uh, mm -hmm. support from general budget. Our greatest level of outreach for, for here mm -hmm. is to veterans. Ah, we okay, received yes. we received funding from the American Legion and the VFW, oh, okay. and they want it used and rightly so, particularly sure. for veterans. Yes, and so we help veterans in every county here mm -hmm. at Community okay. Church on the Eastern Shore. Awesome. Well, ours is Tri County, mm -hmm. Wicomico, Somerset, mm -hmm. and Worcester, and what we see it's not targeted to any one particular. But um, I think our program co coordinator, Dawn, sees mostly people with social security disability okay. mm -hmm. is where she's mm -hmm. fallen into that, and particularly seniors. Okay. Those that maybe have um, lost insurance in between jobs. Mm -hmm. and, and we know that there's a lot of people who are losing Medicare and Medicaid. And things it's like changing. That. It's yeah. changing. Yeah. But then we have a children's program, Kids ah, Cafe. Yeah, I remember that. And it's um, Monday through Thursday okay. during the school year. Mm. They either attend um, East Salisbury or Beaver Run School. Okay. That kind of puts them in 
our neighborhood, which is the Church Street neighborhood mm -hmm. in Salisbury. Mm -hmm. And it is uh, high poverty and has been known mm -hmm. for high crime. Mm -hmm. I remember that. So, you know, our children are considered um, at risk, at risk, yeah. disadvantaged. Um, the program was more African-American black children. That's what the neighborhood was. Mm -hmm. But over the last couple years, the neighborhood has changed and most of our children now are Haitian. Oh, wow. Uh, so we um, support the Haitian community by ha offering this free program. It's okay. not targeted to the Haitian families, it just happened to be. Mm -hmm. So when the children come, uh, we pick them up from the bus stop, okay. offer them a meal, help them with homework. We do um, community service, we bring in mm -hmm. community leaders, homework, Bible lessons, wow. field trips. That sounds great. Supply them with can clothing. I, can Austin and I come? Yeah, oh, absolutely. We, I think so. I'd like to do that. <laughs> you can volunteer. <laughs> okay, well, that, that might be a good there thing, go. too. <laughs> Reaps on the benefits. Um, and then we have um, God's Kitchen. Yes, and we're familiar with that. Which you're all familiar with that. With that. Yes. And Priscilla uh, and Grace Church host that on every Saturday. Mm -hmm. And anyone's welcome. It's a free lunch. She has mm -hmm. about 56 organizations now That's that good. are helping That's out. That's great. Tremendous. And anybody in need of a lunch is more than welcome to come. Mm -hmm. And then we have the Men's Welcome Center. Oh, wow. Okay. I didn't realize that. What's yes. that about? Well, that has changed since COVID. Uh, it was originally Men's Welcome Center. Homeless men would come in on Saturday, mm -hmm. do their laundry, get a shower. We give them referrals if they need health referrals mm -hmm. or whatever. Right. Then they'd go over God's Kitchen for lunch. Lunch. Okay. Well, then COVID hit. Mm -hmm. We had to stop that. Mm -hmm. Then we've tried to start it back up um, and just really not had the number of men to come through hmm. nor the volunteer support. Okay. So here we are again, thinking outside the box. So we hooked up with um, Salisbury's hot team, homeless outreach team. Okay. Okay. And that group of, um, it actually happens to be two guys come over and we uh, have coats and boots and sleeping hmm. bags. Uh, hygiene items, okay. food, snacks. So they'll take that out to the campsites. Okay. And then Joshua House Ministries, Walt is a volunteer from there. Walt will actually also get the same type of supplies and visit mm -hmm. the people on the streets. Okay. So we haven't given up the program. No, but it's changed. We, we've re yes, we've reinvented it. And you know, I, and I think as the need and the opportunity change. Yeah. We have mm -hmm. to respond because it's not about maintaining something that we like or want. It's more about how do we really help those persons yeah. who are in need. So it sounds like you're a busy person. Yes. That's 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 good. <laughs> I'm, yes. I'm I'm happy that there is someone responding to those kinds of needs for people who sometimes we maybe look away from mm -hmm. or maybe don't notice because we're afraid of them or we think oh that's a, a person mm -hmm. who's different mm -hmm. and things and um, you know I'm, I'm glad that Salisbury Urban Ministries continues to do ministry with people who really matter to God and should matter yes. to, to us. And I do have to mention that um, we have a governing body, okay. the Parish Council, mm -hmm. and, that, and that was originated with Church, Methodist churches mm -hmm. in Salisbury, everybody was kind of doing their own thing. Right. One would be doing a lunch, maybe one would do, be doing something with children. And Reverend McKelvey pulled the different churches together mm -hmm. back in 1992 yeah. and came up with Salisbury Ministry. Mm -hmm. So we still have our covenant churches okay. with um, some of the churches disaffiliating from the United mm -hmm. Methodist Church. We don't see that that's going to impact us. Good. Um, we've really looked over our bylaws, talked with our churches, and it, bottom line, if you want to be a part of our ministry, why not? You know, Debbie, I think I'm so glad to hear that, and, you know, at mm -hmm. many levels. Mm -hmm. One level is, you know, I feel very broken by the disaffiliation mm -hmm. because these are my friends. These sure. are people I've known sure. for oh, yeah. as some as long as we oh, know yes. each other. Oh, and, yes. You know, yes. they don't... They don't and they're still my brothers and sisters oh, in Christ. They don't stop being my friends no. unless they choose to do that. Mm. It's not going to be my choice. Yes. It would have to be their choice. The other thing is, whatever we as a church institution do, mm -hmm. people still need to eat. They still yeah. need a place yeah. to sleep. They still need those supplies. They yes. need medications. Whatever we do, that need doesn't go away until... And, and, we're, and we're not in the pulpit. <clears throat> no. Um, 
involved in what may have caused the separation. Mm -hmm. We're a ministry reaching out to people. Yeah. And and you know and you know there are some human need mm -hmm. <clears throat> is human need. That's why I'm mm -hmm. so thrilled with what Uncor does. Yes. You know their yes. mission and goal is to to meet human need, mm. not to be involved in the politics right. or the mm -hmm. inner workings, right. but yes. to respond to human yes. need. And and I've told people here that one of the things that I hope that we can accomplish is we can be a place where everyone, regardless of their perspective, mm -hmm. feels welcome. Mm -hmm. Sure. But we keep our the main thing, the main thing, mm -hmm. and the main thing is still caring for God's people. Yep. Bottom yes. Bottom line, yes. it doesn't change. Well, we've been very blessed with the churches that are um, our governing body. The um, mm -hmm. Financially support us, mm -hmm. Good. With Good. Do and then with monetary donations, with product donations, and with volunteer support. Mm -hmm. And I think what we see the struggle right now is church not everybody has returned back to church. Mm -hmm. Yes. In general. There are a lot of changes. And, lot of changes. and then let's add the changes, and let's add virtual. Yes. And I, I'm guilty. It's a good excuse to sit up, <laughs> wear your pajamas, drink coffee. I, well, I had a lady tell me, she said, Dale, she, and, and this is a lady I grew up with. Mm -hmm. She said, I've been to church more than the last six months during mm -hmm. COVID. She mm -hmm. said, I ever have. I said, mm -hmm. I can sit home and watch, my, watch church with my PJs. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I said, but don't you ever come in your PJs, but you could, that's great. <laughs> And she and just is a faithful, wonderful yes. volunteer mm -hmm. member mm -hmm. and everything. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I understand. Mm -hmm. There've been oh, yeah. those things have impact us. It has. So in turn, what we see the impact is, if folks aren't going to church, they may not be giving financially like they have in the past, and they may not be aware. New people may yes. not be aware mm -hmm. of the, the wonderful things that you that you do. I mean, it's yeah. tremendous. Yeah. It's really ministry to the whole person. And I think yes. that's what Jesus calls us to do, mm -hmm. to really understand that no one asks to be poor. Oh. No one asks to be hungry. It happens sometimes because of bad decisions, yeah. sometimes just the way circumstance. Mm -hmm. You know, a catastrophic medical illness sure. is one of the leading causes in putting persons mm -hmm. in positions of poverty. Mm -hmm. Job loss, all these things happen. And, and we don't look at them and say, you're a bad person because we look at them and say, you know, God loves you, we love you, and we're going to do what we can. Can't solve all the needs, but we can solve some well, of I them. think it just being there. Yeah. And sometimes just lending an ear and mm -hmm. sometimes just going a little bit extra. Mm -hmm. um, and letting me know if somebody cares. I have a tendency of going outside the lines a little bit. <laughs> I noticed that when you said you spent 61% of your yearly budget in April. So that would mean you'd spend like 200 some percent of your budget. And so what do you do when you have more need than you have You, go, you do podcasts. Okay. And, and, and you ask people for money. Need. Yeah, I understand. Um, you do a mission moment within your covenant yeah, churches. Yeah, yeah I uh, You put out all... Uh, word that that is a strong need right now it yeah. is and you write more grants and yes, you reach out absolutely to, our funders have been that's very so supportive that's so very supportive as far as you know our grants and, yeah. and funders and yeah see um you know i laugh but you know one of the things that we're saying i don't know if yeah. you're saying or not is yeah. you know during covid so many groups gave food away that was what they yes. were able to yes. do yes now yes. that covid yes. has kind of yes you know changed Got to in the form. back seat yes and we're seeing a lot of people more people coming mm -hmm. we're seeing a lot yes, of people we are. elderly and we're seeing a lot of children at the yes. food pantry mm -hmm. and when children come it just breaks your heart when the elderly come who've worked yes. all their lives yep. you can't say to them go get a job or no. you know you've got to do something yeah. there and our veterans and you know it just it's just a lot of need we who have so much mm. should be always with gratitude and thanksgiving sharing what we have with, with others. So if I wanted to, speaking of that, if I wanted mm -hmm. to give to Salisbury Urban sure. Ministries or support it as a volunteer, mm -hmm. how would I do that? I would think but the most direct way would be to call our office. Okay. And um, it's, you can Google that? You can, but it's 410-749-1563. Okay. Okay. Ask for Debbie. All right, and if you have any trouble, if you're connected to community church, I can send mm -hmm. you there too. Sure, sure. And then to find out what people's interests are. Okay. Some people like to be up front, be out front, hands on. Some folks would rather do paperwork or bag food. Uh, some folks really enjoy working with children. Mm -hmm. Uh, so there's a way that you could volunteer that way. Uh, okay. Of course, you could call Priscilla or okay. call me, and I can hook you up with Priscilla for okay. God's Kitchen. Okay. 
and um, she needs folks that are can substitute. Mm -hmm. So for some reason, a church is unable. Maybe um, one of their members passed, and they were unable to cover their Saturday. Mm -hmm. And we've had that happen. Mm -hmm. That um, I think it's actually happened to us. Has it? Okay. So that if we had somebody on the back burner that could jump in and fill a Saturday, that mm -hmm. would be most helpful. Okay. And and so you're, if I'm remembering correctly, on Saturdays you're talking about about 200 lunches. Mm -hmm. Yes. And um, so when we pack the lunches, it's generally like a cold cut, mm -hmm. but it's got cookies and sure. potatoes yes. and chips yeah, and some yeah. things. You know, a reasonable lunch for yes. persons to have, a bag lunch. Sure. So if an organization was interested in that, oh, sure. that would give them an idea mm -hmm. of what they need mm -hmm. to be able to yes. accomplish. Yes, yes. And, and, and so <clears throat> with, the, with the financial side of things, mm -hmm. have the same process? To contribute financially, yes. Um, you can set it up as an automatic pay that it's um, deposited from your bank directly mm -hmm. into a general account. We have several folks, myself and me, <laughs> that we mm -hmm. have set it up that way. Right. You can certainly write a check to okay. Salisbury or Ministries. The catch to that is um, don't use our street address. We don't have a mailbox. Okay. Use our P.O. box. Okay. Good so, to know. So P.O. Box 1792, okay. Salisbury. So Austin's going to take mm -hmm. all this information yes. and he's going to put it on the screen. Yes, okay. And in that way people will know, but yes. we'll keep it here in the office too. Yes. But I think it's tremendous that this program continues. Mm -hmm. It's an important program mm -hmm. in this community. And, and giving that the time, which I think is always very important, and giving your finances. Mm -hmm. What I can say about my experience with you in Salisbury Urban Ministry is that there's a high integrity. We often yes. wonder, does our dollar make a difference? Yes. Does it get to where we yes. want it to go? Yes. And, and I can say, with this, for personal knowledge, mm -hmm. with this organization, with Debbie, mm -hmm. that um, it does. It gets to the person who needs it and who you're giving either of your time or your finances yes. can makes makes a huge it difference. Does. Or in kind, or, or in kind, in, yeah. or in kind um, yeah. numbers are are huge as far as what the dollar amount okay. is over time. That if folks didn't donate the food, so, the volunteer time, the okay. product, mm -hmm. I don't know how we'd be in existence. So, what are some in kind type things? That you food is one of Just those. Just food is one. Food, okay. School supplies. All right bottled water okay uh, we'll put out certain um, we send to the covenant churches and anybody that asks a monthly list of mm -hmm. things and it might be for the food pantry side dishes okay might be for the men's welcome center um, book spray okay and for the children mostly recently of course it was school supplies yes. or we really ask for financial donation that way because we had some supplies mm -hmm. but we also want to buy them some clothing and mm -hmm. it's easier for us to know their sizes and what they like versus having somebody having to go out and shop for And them. I'll tell you what we've experienced too in a similar way because we used to do lots and lots of school supplies. Mm -hmm. Is that schools are requiring things yes. that are different. Yes. Um, they don't want notebook paper anymore. Mm -hmm. They do want this or that or the Composition other. Composition books. Yeah, mm -hmm. and, and, and so we encourage people to give financially yes. if they're able. Um, and um, you know, that allows us to use those funds to buy mm -hmm. a higher at a bulk rate yes, and get right. a better price right. and, uh, yes. as well. Yes. And, and yet we still like those. I mean, oh, it's fun. It's fun Debbie, to I went the in, other supplies. I mean, my it son is, is 32, uh -huh. and you know that I have a new grandson. Mm -hmm. So I went in Walmart the other day. I was just walking around checking oh, yes. out the school supplies. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. It's getting to be that yes. time of year. And I, you know, I haven't been to school in years, mm -hmm. but, you know, it is. it's getting it to is. be that time of year. Sure, so. sure. So what's the cutting edge? What's the next thing for Salisbury Urban Ministry? Is there a, an emerging need, or is there something that's out mm -hmm. there for you guys that you think... Man, this we, is what we'd like to do if we could. We just keep looking at we're out we're outgrown we've outgrown our building. Okay. Yet we need to be in the Church Street area. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And our clients know where we are. Right. But we we don't know. You know, we we've had some opportunities to look at different partnerships, mm -hmm. to look at a different building. Um, we've actually, you know, here we are saying again, formed a committee. Okay. It's and the it, Methodist thing. Yeah, yeah. If, if, we're not going to, if we're not eating, taking an offer, right. and forming a committee. That's right. 
Yes, I t I've been a minister for 32 years now. Oh, I've seen so to, many committees. You've got, to, you've got to have a committee. That's right. Um, and it's made up of pastors and one layperson. Oh. Pastors, well, a couple volunteer to each other. Okay. <laughs> That's but, why we're all such good friends. Yeah, exactly, you know. exactly. Um, but they're gonna, we're going to sit down and look at the future. Where mm -hmm. are we headed? What are the needs? You know, what's mm -hmm. the calling? Mm -hmm. um, so we're excited about that and not knowing. Mm -hmm. So it's... Um, you, you want to look around the corner sometimes you're afraid to look around the corner so you'll have to come back ah, and tell us what the committee voted on y there you go and decided there, there you go you know one of the areas that we struggle with in worcester county in northern mm -hmm. middle worcester county mm -hmm. is housing oh. you know yes. because oh, yes. and, you know yes. if someone gets out of their house or yes. can't pay their rent yes or, you know we have a lot of times where people stay in condos and mm -hmm. things off season mm -hmm. once they're out it's very very difficult yeah. Place. I had a, a young lady who was actually in a women's shelter in Salisbury from mm -hmm. abuse okay. and was trying to help her find a place in this area because she had a job Oh, okay. and things. I could not find a single place yeah. that would take she and her two children yeah. because she and she would, in a month or two, she would be able to afford mm -hmm. the rent, yep. but yes. she couldn't afford the deposit right. in the first month. Mm -hmm. It's a challenge. It and, is a challenge. And things. So, so not that that should be where you should go, but I mean, for us, that's yes. our, that's sort of our cutting edge yes. and, and things as well. Sure. So Debbie, I want to close our time together in two ways. Okay. First, I want to just reiterate a name that we mentioned earlier. You and I are both big fans of the gentleman mm -hmm. who was so instrumental in the mm -hmm. life of this church and in the creation of Salisbury Urban Ministries. And, and friend, I don't know that he'll ever watch this. I mean, I have no mm -hmm. idea. Right, I hope he right, does. I'll right. try to get him to. Yeah. Um, but we both feel the same way. He mm -hmm. is a wonderful Christian man. Yes. He was pastor of this church 18 to 22 years. Oh, yes. uh, and, and I hope that in some way <clears throat> that Tom and Karen McKelvey mm -hmm. are realizing the significant impact oh. that they have had on the community. Mm -hmm and on people whose lives they continue to touch even in retirement mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. even in just you know being together as a retired married couple living mm -hmm. here in Ocean Pines uh, I get the joy of seeing them every Sunday yes and uh, you know and they're dear people they're dear mm -hmm. friends and I and I want to say that we did this in honor of them and, and I think it's and a recognition. legacy. Absolutely. It's a legacy that they that they are leaving. And, Absolutely. And I mean, if someone wanted, you know, from this church or this community mm -hmm. wanted to give to Salisbury Urban Ministries sure. in honor of Tom, in honor uh, of Karen, and we do have that a, would be have a, good a memory thing. fund or yeah. in honor of. Yeah, and and, and that, I, mm -hmm. I know that they would. They'd sure. rather have that than anything that they could be given. Oh, that would be nice. Yeah. That but would I also nice. want to pray. One more Absolutely. As we, I think prayer is important. Mm -hmm. And and you know. Um, Oftentimes, when we have those committee meetings, we pray and then we kind of move <laughs> on. Maybe prayer is a, a way of being present with both God and the people mm -hmm. who are receiving these ministry, who are wonderful children of God, made in God's image and loved mm -hmm. just because they are. Amen. So how about we, we pray? Absolutely. Let's pray. Wonderful Christ, we thank you for Debbie and for all of those who serve in Salisbury Urban Ministries, mm -hmm. we ask that your blessing rest and abide upon them. We pray for the people who receive help. Mm -hmm. We don't know their names, but we will meet them and share eternity with them. And we just pray that those who are hungry will be fed. Yes. Those who are homeless will be uh, find a place of safety and security to live. That those who need mental health and physical prescriptions will have their medical needs met. Mm -hmm. And we pray that as all this is done, they will know that they're deeply loved by their Creator. Yes. And another person who f enfleshes that reality to them. Mm -hmm. And gracious God, we just give thanks for Tom and, and, and Karen. We ask yes. that your blessing rest and abide upon them. And, and we thank them for their legacy. Mm -hmm. And may we be faithful and leave a legacy similar, <laughs> but in, according to our gifts and our interest in Christ's yes. name. Amen. Amen. Thanks Thank for you. watching. Have a Thanks. great day. <laughs>